But a lot of you are going to say, I, I don't really get how you sort of visually developed your intuition for this. Is there another path? And the answer is uh, there is another path. Um, I don't like it very much as I kind of alluded to at the start, but I will show you um, roughly sort of the brush strokes of it. Um, and then by the end of it, I hope you'll see why um, I don't think it's a preferable method, okay? So I guess you could call this, you could call this the, the visual, the geometric method for doing this. Um, what's the kind of like algebraic tool that we can use that will help us here? Well, you can see here, um, that what we're trying to do is search for a maximum value of something. Now, if you were not in extension two, if you were in advanced or extension one in an exam and you saw the, the, that phrase, maximum value, um, I suspect your brain would go immediately to calculus. You would say, oh, I need to, um, I need to find an expression that can be differentiated and then I can, um, I can work with this thing, right? So how would you go about trying to arrive at a derivative for this so that you could then actually work out um, where like stationary points and turning points are? Well, uh, let's have a think about this together. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, make a little heading here. I'm going to say uh, method two. I'm gonna call this Calculus, right? So let's just go um, and, and name it that. Now there's a couple of different ways to go about this. Uh, whoopsie daisy. Here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say in order to get this in calculus terms, I've got to be able to, number one, uh, deal with these absolute values, right? You see how you've got these, uh, these moduli in there, right? And um, the absolute value is kind of in, you know, real number terms. It's shorthand for two different things. It's like there's a positive case, there's a negative case. Um, that makes differentiating a bit of a pain, right? Because you're like, I don't really want to handle um, two cases. Um, if I was just differentiating this, there'd be a positive version and a negative version. And in fact, there's not just two cases, there's actually four because You've got the positive negative for this, and then you've got the positive negative for this, and they change over at different spots. That sounds awful. So what I want to do is try and reframe this so it doesn't have the modulus um, notation in it, uh, and then I'm going to try and apply some calculus to it. So here's the way I'm going to go about it. Uh, remember that the absolute value or the modulus of some kind of uh, complex number, that's going to be equal to the square root of uh, the two shorter sides of the right angled triangle that your complex number sits in. So that's fine, I can handle that. But the only challenge is I, I don't have this in terms of um, X's and Y's, I have this in terms of thetas. This question was given to me with um, theta being the um, variable or the parameter if you like, right? So I want to keep this not in, in terms of X's and Y's, but in terms of thetas. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to have to express this not in rectangular form, but in polar form. So I want to, uh, I'll push this off to the side. We'll refer back to it later. I'm going to say um, this function of theta, right? That's what this is. It's the modulus of e to the i theta minus 2 plus modulus of e to the i theta plus 2. What I can do is I can write it in polar form because that'll keep things in terms of thetas, but it will also enable me to use this fact because it gets rid of this modulus. That's what I was trying to avoid because that's a pain to differentiate. So uh, let's go ahead and just sort of uh, write that out. Instead of writing e to the i theta in polar form, that number is just going to be cos theta plus i sine theta minus 2. Uh, and then you get the same thing over here. It's cos theta plus i sine theta and it's gonna be plus two. And you're gonna see because these left and right hand moduli are so similar, we're gonna get a lot of um, repetition as we go through this working. Okay, now in order to use um, this formula over here, I need to cleanly separate the real part from the imaginary part. And what I notice is you can see um, in each one, you've got the real component there, uh, and then you've got the imaginary component there, and you've got the same thing for both uh, moduli. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it like so. I've got uh, this cos theta minus 2, that's the uh, real part, and then I've got i sine theta, that's the imaginary part. So I'm going to uh, pop an absolute value sign there to get the modulus. What am I adding? The same thing, everything is the same except you can see instead of having a minus 2 in red, I've got a plus 2. Okay, so now I am actually ready to take these uh, things which have moduli sort of notation in them and convert it into something like this. That's also messy. This is one of the reasons why this calculus approach is not great to say the least, but at least it will get rid of the moduli, the absolute value notation, so I've got a single expression that I can then differentiate. So what am I going to get? Um, well, I'm going to have the square root of, um, well, x squared plus y squared. In this case, my x is going to be cos theta 
minus two and that thing gets squared. Uh, and then I have my y squared, which in this case is, uh, it's gonna be sine theta squared because um, remember that y there is just the imaginary component, it doesn't have the i attached to it. So in this case, it's gonna give me sine squared theta. Then I'm gonna pop that radical sign. Oops, that was very messy. Let's just do it this way and be lazy. That'll do, okay. So I've got my uh, radical sign going over the top. And as we noted before, um, what you get from the other modulus is almost identical. It's just that instead of cos theta minus uh, two, I've got cos theta plus two, that's being squared. Okay, good, uh, let's keep going. I again have this square root over the top, and as I start to expand stuff out, you'll see some of this begins to simplify. So I've got cos squared theta minus four cos theta plus four, and then I'm going to add my sine squared theta there. So you can see the Pythagorean identity is going to appear in here, so that'll be handy. And then let's pop the square root over the top. There we go. And then what I'm adding is everything will be the same, except because what I was doing was I was expanding on the right hand side cos theta plus two, the only term that changes is gonna be this four cos theta. It's gonna be a plus instead of a minus. Okay, this is looking promising. You can see I've got this cos squared plus sine squared. It, it happens twice. So therefore what you're getting is, uh, let's write it in purple, that's the one. Uh, it's going to be minus four cos theta that's there. And then because I noticed there's also this, um, not only does the one become a constant term underneath the square root, we've also got this plus four. So I'm gonna write that, um, I'll write that in purple as well because I'm gonna collect like terms in a second. So we'll pop that square root over the top. That's looking good. Plus, uh, everything is again the same except that I've flipped around the sign on this uh, four cos theta, so I get a plus there. And so now, I'm almost there. I've got the square root of uh, one plus four in each case is five minus four cos theta. Uh, square root over the top. And then plus, everything is the same, but it's a plus four cos theta. Okay, now I am almost ready to go um, in terms of getting from this to a derivative because I'm, I'm trying to maximize, you remember that? Um, but in order to do that, I think it might be easier if I write this in index notation. So I'm gonna say uh, f of theta equals, here we go, don't have to write these long, awkward square root signs anymore, five minus four cos theta to the power of half, and also five plus four cos theta to the power of half. Fantastic, all right. Hold on to your hats. This doesn't look pleasant at all, but um, I must differentiate if I'm gonna try and use this calculus approach, right? So, f dash theta, what are we getting? Well, this is the chain rule, isn't it? Um, it's going to require me to differentiate the outside, then differentiate the inside. So let's do that one at a time. Differentiating the outside, I've got something to the power of a half. So I, I think about the, uh, just the power rule. So I multiply by the power, I write the same thing in the inside of the brackets and then I reduce the power by one. That is the derivative of the outside. And then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So in that, in this case, that's going to be, um, what is the inside function here? It's five minus four cos theta. So cos theta differentiates into negative sine theta. That negative is gonna cancel with that negative four that's already there. So I'm thinking I get four sine theta out the other end. So there is the outside, there's the inside, that's gonna tidy up in a second. Uh, we're going to rinse and repeat for the other term. So everything's gonna look very similar, but some things are going to get flipped around, right? So because we've got um, something that's still raised to the power of a half, you can see that's still a half out the front and then negative a half is a power. But because I've got a five plus four cos theta that's on the inside, when I do my inside derivative, I don't get positive four sine theta, I get negative four sine theta. Okay, this is looking better. We've got a lot of things to deal with here. So first I noticed there's this half times this four. So half of four, last I checked, was two. Um, you've also got that sine theta term that belongs on the numerator of the fraction that's about to appear. So I'll write that up the top. And then uh, you have this term in here. Remember when you've got a negative power, that's the same as division. So what you've got there is you're dividing by five minus four cos theta to the power of a half. But of course, um, that is just this term up here. That's what I have on the denominator. So I'll pop that in blue so you recognize where it came from. 
Okay, so there's the first term, and then, are you getting, are you getting sick of this yet? Uh, you're gonna have everything the same on the right-hand side term, but um, instead of having a plus two sine theta, you're gonna have a minus two sine theta, um, and then instead of this five minus four cos theta, you're gonna have five plus four cos theta. So let's go ahead and write that minus sine, which has come from uh, this minus four, and then everything else will look very familiar, except you're gonna get that down the bottom. Okay, uh, that looks disastrous, right? Um, but that is, sure enough, the derivative.